section 2.4 is where we're headed right now and you'll notice the title it says reasoning with properties of algebra now nice thing about this title is we've dealt with algebra before we had a whole school year last year in algebra so a lot of this is going to be just to review I like that the, the main reason why we're doing this though is what we're going to be focusing on, and you'll notice this other title, title, we've been talking a lot about reasoning, but the most recent is deductive reasoning. And deductive reasoning was it kind of leading us into this idea of proof. So this is where, at the beginning of this chapter, I was saying something about how we're gonna take baby steps. Well, this is our first kind of step to it. We're gonna start with something that you're comfortable with, okay. your algebra, and show you kind of that what a proof kind of looks like more in the algebraic sense and then we're gonna see tomorrow what it would look like more as a geometry scenario. Okay, okay? sounds good. So before we actually do one I'm just gonna have you help me solve this algebra problem. It's okay. an equation. Sounds good. And we can do that. What makes this a little different than just your traditional algebraic equation is that next to the step I'm gonna have you tell me what to write by describing what happens in that step. Okay. So when you look at this equation, we're trying to solve for x, of course. So what would be your initial first step? Uh, I would distribute the 9. Okay, so when I do that, so 6x plus 3 equals a 9x minus 9. So off to the side, I'm just going to put distribute, I'm going to abbreviate here. Actually, I'll write this out and we'll abbreviate. Distribute the 9. Perfect. Okay. And then I would get all of the variables to one side. Okay. So I would move the 6x to the other so side. So subtract, subtract 6x. Subtract 6x from both sides. So we're going to have 3 equals 3x minus, minus 9. 9. Mm -hmm. So you said subtract 6x, and you said on both sides. That's right. That's important. The key that we've learned in algebra. Okay. And then I would move the negative 9 to the other side by adding 9 to both sides. Well, I can do that. So again, to both sides, we're adding 9 this time to both sides. Okay, and then divide both sides by 3. All right, so then I'm going to end up with 4 equals x and divide by 3 on both sides. Now, do you care if I leave it as 4 equals x, or are you one of those teachers that's going to be picky and say, I, I need to have x equals 4? I'm okay, because it just said solve, so it says x, you found okay. the value of x. Now, if you wanted to, you could, and we will actually talk about what allows us to do that in just a little bit. So, okay. Ms. Togar, you're just thinking ahead. <laughs> good job. Well, I know that I have students ask me that every year. I so know, I know. It's clarify. a good question. Every teacher's a little different. But there will be times where you will have to, and we're going to talk about how that, how we can describe that. Now, Ms. Hograby, help me through this problem, and you're probably all looking at it like this is easy. Well, it, it really should be because it's an Algebra 1 concept or even pre-algebra. What we're going to focus today on is kind of condensing this description part. Okay. Um, and you'll notice how I formatted it. Notice my work kind of, I didn't even show, you can show if you wanted to. If you needed to see you subtract 6x, I didn't show that because at this point in the game, some of you don't need to do that and we're not going to require that. Right. But you notice that we kept all of our kind of work on one side and over on the right, we put our like description. Oh, so is this deductive reasoning because those is, are our reasons? This is our, these are oh, our reasons. Okay. This is explaining what you do. And guys, if you think about it. You explain anytime you talk through the teacher or talk to somebody through a problem, you're telling us what to do each time. So you've done this before, it's just now we're just formally writing it down. Okay. All right, so we'll get to kind of more of these in just a minute. But before we do that, where we're going with is, is there a better way to describe this? So on this next slide, I'm gonna have Ms. Hope Ramey help us out here. Okay, we're gonna be talking about just some algebraic properties of equality because with deductive reasoning, we're gonna use given properties or definitions and these are some of the properties that we would want to be able to use when we're looking at equations and, and these properties are, are like rules they're true things they're true things all right so first of all the addition property the addition property of equality says that as long as i add the exact same thing to both sides of our equation 
Okay. It's going to keep the equation true. Sounds like so, something we've done before. Exactly. It's nothing new. We do have a shortcut for this. Uh-huh. Um, where we could say that, well, we're going to call it APO, Addition Property of Equality. Oh, the acronym. I a love it. acronym. And so we won't have to write out added nine to both sides. We're just going to write APO. Mm -hmm. And again, this is saying whatever I do to one side of the equation, I can do to the other. Mm -hmm. So if I have that A equals B, then if I add a C to this side, I would have to add a C to this side. Okay. That's what this is stating. So A, if A equals B, then A plus C would equal our B plus C. That's the addition property of equality. Okay. Okay? Now, the subtraction property of equality. Again, it says if I subtract something from one side, I'm going to have to subtract it from the other side. And our abbreviation, our acronym for that is going to be SPO, the subtraction property of equality. So again, if I'm given that A is equal to B, then the new statement that I can make is if I subtract a number from both sides, so A minus C would then equal our B minus C. Okay. Okay, so I could subtract the exact same thing from both sides, and these two would still be equivalent. Okay. Okay. The multiplication property of equality, again, says if I multiply something to one side, I'm multiplying it to the other. These should sound pretty much the same thing, just changing the operation. Impo. You got it. Multiplication property of equality. So again, if I'm starting off with oh, A equals B, then we know that A times a C would equal a B times a C. As long as I do the exact same thing to both sides, I'm keeping it equivalent. And the last one, the division property of equality. If I divide something from one side, I would have to divide it from the other side as well. That's Depot. Like Home Depot. Like Home Depot. <laughs> you got it. So again, if A is equal to B, then I could say that A over C would equal my B over C. As long as I divide the exact same thing from both sides, it would be equivalent. So kind of on the last slide, when you were helping me talk through those, um, so like that second step where you said subtract 6x on both sides, could we just say SPO instead from Absolutely. here on out? Absolutely. We will not we need don't to write need to all like the rest of it We don't need to describe it in as much detail. Exactly. And like the next what would, I would be here? APO. Uh-huh. And then that would be DEPO. Awesome. Oh. What do you think? Now, I distribute, see, that's another one that we will, we're going to talk about. And in fact, let's go to that next slide because we have some other properties that we use in algebra, but we also use them in geometry. There are just other properties that help us when we're looking at equivalence. Okay, so the first four properties that Ms. Hogarby went through, those are ones that you have seen and use a lot when you solve an equation, so you're comfortable with that. You probably even were taught those in Algebra 1 class. Now, these next set of three, and I'm going to kind of group these, these three right here kind of go together in a sense because they're more um, new to you, newer to you. You'll notice the reason why I do that because you've done substitution before, right? Yes. Distributive property. Um, right. We just did it. Mm -hmm. So the reflexive property, what that basically is, it says for any real number, A, A equals A. Okay. okay. So when you read that. That kind of seems like a no-brainer. No-brainer, right? So I will tell you right now. Reflexive property is not something we're going to use a lot. This is more when we get to a later chapter. And uh, one of the later chapters that we're going to get to, it's going to say we're going to have to kind of use that. All right. So reflexive property of equality is another one. Okay. Symmetric property of equality. Let me go ahead and give that to you. It says if A equals B, then B equals A. Okay, so, oh, like that very last step, remember how I said with x, does it, what I want to write it is 4 equals x, or do I need to flip it as x equals 4? Would that be the symmetric property? Yes, so if I put instead, all I did was, I did, did I change the meaning of this? No, you just changed no, the I word. just changed, it's equal. Rewrite, rewrote it. So if I wanted to do that, I could use the symmetric property. So I just write symmetric. Okay. Let's see, where are we at? There we are. Now. One, I'm going to make a little note because really what symmetric property, the whole point of it is just to rewrite. It doesn't really change the meaning. It makes it, it just look a little bit differently. Okay. All right. This one is just to state it's equal to itself. Right. Transitive property, this is one that we're going to use probably the most. When you read it, it says if A equals B and B equals C, well then A has to equal C. 
that almost looks like the law of syllogism in a way. Yeah, it except for does. it's not conditional statements; it's equality statements. Yeah, okay. In a sense, because it's just one. But the thing is, it's one conditional statement. It's basically saying if you have two equal things already provided, we know this is true. And notice of the two they have are set equal, they have something already in common. So we can set A to equal C. Okay. So this will allow that us really to come up sense. with, a, you have two equal statements, you're coming up with a third equal. So that's why the law of syllogism kind of sounds familiar. Um, again, this is by far the most popular tra the, uh, property. We're not, again, we're not going to use reflexive a ton. Symmetric is going to use anytime we have to rewrite something. Transitive is going to You'll notice it allows you to come up with a brand new idea. Okay. So most popular. Now, substitution property, we already know it. If you know some things are equal, you can substitute one with the other. All right? We've done that already actually a lot this year sure. so far. Um, and then the distributive property, we've just talked about that. Now, I'm I'm cool with, and I don't know how Ms. Hope Gravy is, um, abbreviating. I know oh, distributive yeah. property, I like to use D-I-S-T. A dist. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Substitution, I would... I'm okay with sub for substitution. Now be careful, you know, subtraction has the same three first letters. So when you're using subtraction property of equality, you want to use SPO. Okay. So like on this last slide, instead of say distribute by nine or distribute nine, you could just you could say dist it. D-I-S-T. Dist it. Dist it. 